let's jump to aerospace. The big boy. Yes. And so there were a couple stories that came out over the last month that talked a lot about um, qualifying different materials and processes for aerospace. Mm -hmm. So the first one is uh, Midwest Prototyping, mm -hmm. which is a big service bureau out in Indiana, I believe. Uh, I believe yeah, they have an so. office in Colorado and, um, yes, Indiana, I think. Okay. I think they're out of Indiana. Yeah, they're a, they're a massive service bureau. They have stretched Wisconsin and printers. Colorado. Wisconsin and Colorado. Okay. Wisconsin is more that's where those That's where their aerospace facilities are. Ah. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Um, and they just received a AS9100 certification mm -hmm. to be able to 3D print aerospace-grade parts. So they're printing parts, and those parts are actually going on to airplanes. So, okay. So <laughs> I'm going to stop you right there because I feign a lot of ignorance. And <laughs> I was honest, honestly under the assumption that that was happening already. Like I feel like 3D printing has been in the news enough, and that was like a lot of the lightning rod of attention was aerospace, lightweight mm -hmm. parts, and things like that. So I felt like that was already a thing. So what's different about this? There's not many places outside of the big aerospace companies that can do it. So outside of the Boeings, the Airbus, the, right. the military. So unless you're one of five organizations that can do that at an aerospace level, that's really the only use case that's existed prior to this is now an independent there's, company. There's that, and then there's even less that are... 3D printing that have the AS one AS ninety one hundred certification. Okay. What does that mean? I was gonna say yeah. What, what what's the rigidity of that kind of uh, certification? Uh, you're more of a quality guy than I am. Oh, you're, you're, oh god, you throw me under the bus uh, here. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, so I guess the best way to put it is that's a very very nationally recognized standard for aerospace. So you had to have the materials that had to meet certain qualifications. The process, the printer, yes. the post process. All of those things are imagined him to be the highest standard yeah, for aerospace. So, so. Yes. from my understanding, there's five qualifications, three of which are controlled by the, the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And that's, like you said, the material, the process, and the machines. Well, that's very cool. So it's very exciting that it's outside of that space now, because that seems like that opens up other doors now that there's a company that's blazed that path and has, if they can see success from it, other companies will follow, right? Right. There's, a, there's really only a handful... Um, I think American Additive has the same one or a similar one, um, but there's only a mm -hmm. handful of companies, Stratasys, mm -hmm. Stratasys Direct being one of them, that have the standards and the process and the appropriate equipment in place to actually print parts that go on commercial airlines. Mm -hmm. um, and now, well, commercial airlines is, is changing definitions too, as you have more like people mover drones and you have that aerospace taking a different shape. Yeah. It's, it's driving a lot of the need to bring the cost down for those things when you look at creating four-person... I've seen, have you seen those prototypes for, like, four-person air like taxis? A, I saw, like, a 15-second video oh. on Facebook. I feel or like I saw something, something the other day. On, maybe it was, like, a Tesla video on, on Instagram, and it looked like it was a four-person air taxi mm -hmm. that would just take you across town, and that was it. it almost like um, a brave new world. I like, would love that. When can we travel. have this? I know. That'd be great. <laughs> Traffic. Think of the past. Mayor Goldie Wilson. You know what? Musk says that'll never happen. Really? That, really? Yeah. Oh, the Joe see, I feel like he's the guy to, to champion that, though. <laughs> that's why he's going underground. I, I was just saying, he's going yeah. underground, so yeah. he doesn't want He the, said it'll be too noisy. True. Oh, yeah, the high-speed rail. <laughs> it's too noisy. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even think of that. He said, imagine like oh. the little tiny drone, how loud those are. Yeah. Now imagine oh, one that those holds really a person. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, I hadn't either. Well, but still, well, I mean, there's other advancements <laughs> in aerospace that are, you know, certainly has uh, a poured a little bit of gasoline on the impetus for people to start to expand. Exactly. Their so it's, that's good. It's been pursued by such a small number of groups and government agencies for such a long time. And we're starting to see a lot more growth yeah. in once, that area. Once, once the private sector starts to you know, see returns on those investments, that's when it really catches fire. So. Right. Awesome. Um, but alternatively, so they're printing plastic, I believe, right. for aerospace applications. But Airbus, one of those big players that was yeah. one of the first adopters of printing plastic aero aerospace-grade parts... Uh, just partnered with Sigma Labs to start qualifying metal 3D printing mm -hmm. for aerospace as well, which is more exciting because, again, it opens more possibilities for better, stronger, more lightweight parts. Fuel nozzles are, uh, or complex geometry fuel nozzles 
are a big uh, potential well, application in that area, but it has to be proven out first so that you know you look, the planes so, stay in the sky. And if you look, you're, I'm seeing you know stuff on on the article that show like those 3D printed metal turbines and things like that that yeah. I'm used to seeing, and um, it just seems like there are so many applications here, mm -hmm. like in, in metal. Um, so many of those complex geometries that you were talking about, right? That yes. just we don't even know about. Awesome stuff. Yeah. So that's a. Uh, it's exciting. It's going to, I think, change a lot of what our transportation looks like. Yeah, I was going to say. Probably so not, like, tomorrow or in the next two years, but as so, time goes forward. So the other thing I was going to say before, going beyond the air taxi thing, is commercial space travel, right? I mean, yes. that's not 100 years away. That's not a comic book. That's like, you know, people are buying tickets for that. Right. You know, that, that's actually a thing really, really rich people, but they're buying, <laughs> I saw you roll your eyes, Ken, but, but you know, that's a thing. So again, the cost of metal parts goes down, all of a sudden a $200,000 ticket to the moon is only $120,000. I think that might be a little bit of a stretch, but we can hope. You never know. Going to the moon would be sweet. I, I just think- For the weekend, Adam, just for the weekend. Yeah, just for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you yeah. send to the moon? Uh, myself, I want to go to the moon. That would be fun. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm trying to get rid of people? <laughs> Ben's like, who would you to leave on the moon? I don't know how much. Like, I think it's going to be more just simplifying what they're doing now. Okay. So, like, when you look at the classic GE example, it's they're not changing the design. They're just essentially eliminating large amounts of the assembly and manufacturing process. Hmm. So, taking costs out of it in other ways, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. But still, if that frees up monies to invest in other areas and explore future possibilities, I think it's cool. We can dream, damn it. Are you saying <laughs> that we can expect a future where I can buy a ticket to the moon for like 10 bucks? They're talking, <laughs> look, this isn't, this isn't science fiction. Like, I'm not saying 10 bucks, but yeah, this is what they're shooting for. Like, that's Elon Musk's goal. Why yeah. do you have a returnable rocket? Like, that's what they're shooting for. lowering those space costs. Um, but There's a space force. Don't know if you know. We're safe out there. So everyone else is taking this seriously. It's about time you do. It's about time, Ken.